Now the highest UK CAT score is 3, 4, 10. 3, 4, 10. Imagine that, 852.5. Okay. <laughs> Leave a thumbs <laughs> Guys, you know who it is. It's Cringy Star. Finished the UCAT course and now we're on essentially what scores you need to smash the UK cat. As you can tell, I'm super, super excited. Now, usually I'm not that sort of person that says, smash the like button, 50 likes, and I'll give you this and that. No, what I'm gonna say today is, please try hit 50 likes. It really helps me. Yeah. So let's check the computer right now. And so hopefully today, guys, I'm gonna be going through the results you need to get in at Queen Mary's and Kings. You know, basically you might be asking, how am I getting these results? Am I making it up? Am I bored? That's number one. Number two, it is the real, real deal. Usually people won't tell you about this but I have it and it's via the Freedom of Information Act on a certain website but I'm not gonna tell you probably Google it up try find it but that's the real actual thing now if you guys really want it will be in the link description down below so you can see you know the actual results and you can print it out if you want to but I'm just showing you today what sort of scores you need either for graduate medicine um, undergraduate medicine and international students and overseas EU that sort of stuff basically I'm just highlighting the importance of a good UK CAT score but luckily for you you have the UK CAT course prior to this so hopefully it'll benefit you okay we can see from here from A100 this is Queen Mary's UK CAT requirement for the last three years apart from this year basically they can't give us 2020 so they can't give us 2020's admission cycle because it hasn't really finished because people haven't like firmed it and some people, you know, they're still on the waiting list. Basically a few technicalities. But what we can see is the last three years, so from 2016, oh, actually last, yeah, last four years? I'm not sure if it counts like that, but four years worth of results, basically. Okay, so we can see at first, candidates interviewed and applications received, what it says on the tin, essentially. So Queen Mary does have a lot of applicants, 2,000 applicants just to Queen Mary. Um, I'm not sure why this is, probably Imperial and UCL have a lot, a lot higher. Now UCL and Imperial do have a lot more applicants that apply there, primarily because, you know, it, it has that prestige, you know, Imperial University, UCL, Oxford, Cambridge, that sort of stuff. So people apply to Queen Mary on the basis that it's like a secondary option. But in reality, I think it was like 2018, um, I'll link it at the bottom, but it, it was ranked like the second best in London, which is really, really good, especially because I wanted to live in London. I didn't want to move out because I'm not Haram. I don't like doing the Haram stuff. Back to the candidates that are interviewed, nearly 989. So that's roughly around half, maybe 45%, 47%, but that's just an estimation UK cat quantitative reasoning just you know it's helped me out right there international students are put at a disadvantage but you know what can you do it's just what it is um offers made 700 uh, international offers so maybe like 800 offers per 2006 so 720 offers given to home and eu and then 75 for international that's like 800 offers made. You're probably thinking, how can a university cater for 800 medical applicants in a year? As I mentioned prior, some people will choose to go, like if they can get in Queen Mary, they can go probably get into UCL and Imperial, or some of them have probably made it to Cambridge, Oxford. So they'll firm that and they'll probably get into that. Another thing is some won't get the grade. Now the UCAT is to get you to a stage, but at the end of the day, if you flop your UCAT, you can take it the next year. Whereas if you flop your A-levels, then that's med over, unless you take graduate entry. But hopefully I'll explain to you how crazy graduate entry is, and basically that's a different story. I'll explain all of that, so you don't need to worry. Uh, let's go straight back into it. Now the highest UK CAT score is 3, 4, 10. 3, 4, 10, imagine that, 852.5. That's madness, that's honestly madness. You know, that's just ridiculous, you know? Sometimes I actually think they're bots who actually sit the exam. The lowest it says, I'm not even sure how that's possible, honestly. We really get 300 per section. 200, I, I don't know, that's a bot probably. The highest 100% go on interview, that just shows the importance of the UK cap. Um, the lowest that go on interview, 2300. Now 2300 is probably gonna be the third death out exactly, and that's probably someone who got four A stars prediction. Um, I'll explain why I think that is a little bit later on, but that's a very risky score to be getting. The mean is 675. Again, it is quite high. Uh, highest UCAT offered a place. The same guy who got into the interview, because I'm telling you he's probably a bot. 
um, lowest UCAT score offered 230. So he's still got in. Again, when you get to the interview stage, they judge you just on the interview. Now, prior to this, they were judging you on the SJT section, but that's not the case no more, so you don't need to worry about that. They just judge you on the interview section. Now, if you guys want me to go through the actual, like, administration, admissions team booklet thingy that they actually mark you on, link or message me down below. And essentially, that's basically it for undergraduate medicine. Um, we're going to go into uh, graduate medicine, A101. That's basically what the abbreviation is in the UCAS platform. So it shows that applications received EU home students 1,447, sorry. Um, candidates received or interviewed, ah, that's actually pretty low. So that's like one tenth of the applicants that actually get into the interview. Now you wait till you see the UCAT scores, you're gonna be crying, creasing as well. Um, offers made 56 offers, that's madness. Um, offers made international one, now that's, that is madness. One international offer. That's what I'm saying. Graduate medicine is very hard to get into. You think that waiting one year is bad. You're in for a different story right now. I'm telling you, if you don't take this UCAT seriously. Highest UCAT score. Wow. 3480. Bot. Absolute bot. Lowest score. That guy's 100% not getting in. Um, yeah, he's not getting in. Mean score of those who applied is way higher than the mean score that applied there, uh, uh, who applied, where's that score? Oh, they don't have it. I'm saying it's way, way higher. Now you wait for it. Highest score, yes. Lowest UCAT score interviewed, 712. 712 to get an interview. Imagine, imagine how hard that is. So trust me, you might as well wait one year, take the UCAT again and then reapply. Do not take graduate entry like now you've probably seen videos by like Anas Nur Ali who absolutely smashed it and he's a different beast you can tell just by the way his videos are but that's a separate point what I'm telling you is you might watch him and think yeah I can do it as well I'm in um, I'm in like another medicine related course whether that be like biology radiography and all that sort of stuff in reality you're gonna have to be scoring 700 him at lowest is 700 and 12.5 that's really 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 high that's ridiculously high and it says here the mean UCAT score 2903 that's unreal that's unreal 725 basically average that's ridiculous honestly there's no two ways about it now basically explaining a few things when applying to Queen Mary is that you need to have above the third decile to even apply um, for A100 this is the undergraduate one now the lowest that I've seen like verified in person was 590 and 3A stars. So essentially the application process for Queen Mary, let me just show you right now, um, what it is is 50% UCAT and 50% UCAS predicted grades. Now I don't know how it goes with graduate medicine but it just sh shows you the importance of the UCAT. People see it as like an auxiliary exam. Now one small tip that I give is become good friends with your teacher because you know with predicted grades the teachers can boost it if they think that you performed badly on the exam. So trust me on this, this is your opportunity. Go max out, go get those four A stars, those three A stars and um, basically that's it. And just to conclude on this section and I know this seems a little bit boring but trust me, graduate entry do not do it. If you have the opportunity to do so, go to another country and go do it there. The reason why I'm telling you this is look at that mean score, 2903, ridiculous. That's too high, there's no two ways about it, it's way, way too high. It's just ridiculous. So guys, please, please, please listen to the advice and um, do not take graduate entry unless you're forced to. Like, if you're a beast and you've done your biology course and you've got a first and you wanna apply for this, go for it, try it. You know, if you can do it, you can do it. And I rate you, please message me, tell me that you've done it, because it brings some hope. You know, 725, that's unreal. Now again, the final advice is just take the air out if you don't make it the first year. And I know how it feels, I know the craziness behind it, and I know that your parents are probably thinking, you're a disgrace. Don't think about it like that. Think about it as in like a year, just to raise some funds. Potentially, you don't even need to pay for your student loan if you get like apprenticeship that pays like 30k in that year. And I know them ones are crazy, but you can start a side business as well, get an extra 2-3k at the end of the year. So 33k, two years, three years of your like studying and the last year is paid off by the NHS. The reason why I know this is because of a separate problem that I face, but 
hopefully you message me if you want to find out more about that student loan stuff now onto the king's application section now you can see the admission statistics on the screen so if you're with me we're gonna follow 2019 primarily because this is the most recent one okay so we can see that all applicants 1262 interviews 716 sorry my not very good offers basically if you get invited to the interview you're most likely going to get an offer and that's the same with Queen Mary. The reason why I bunched these two together is because of the UCAT. Now with Kings, it doesn't really matter about your predicted grades. The reason why I'm saying this is because, you know, with Queen Mary is 50-50 with this. Now even although they say they will check your predicted grades and your GCSE grades and your other stuff, teacher references, they don't really check that. Trust me on this one, I've applied that. Now I've seen many people who have applied to Kings with like two A stars and an A and still haven't gotten in with like a score of, I don't know, like 640. It's not enough. What's really important with Kings is the UCAT. If you get a score of 700 for undergraduate med, you're guaranteed an interview. They do it in like bands, so like band one is, um, probably like 690 onwards, band two is probably like 690 to 670, then then band three is roughly around like 650, 660 to 670 roughly, and that's, after that it just gets cut off. Now what people don't know, and I didn't really know myself, was that if you take the King's, um, what's it, K+, plus, yeah, I, I believe it's K+. Plus. Now it says upon applying to K+, plus that it doesn't really help your medicine application, but trust me, it does. Now the reason why I'm saying that is because I know a guy who got like 6'10", and he actually got in. He actually got in, so it's actually quite surprising, and I know many people who scored higher than him that didn't even get an interview. And yeah, I was really, really surprised. I didn't honestly think he would have got in with like 6'10", but somehow he did so it just shows that it does actually help your application now you probably some guys probably messaging away you don't know better than king's policy i'm telling you he got in so shush and from here let's get straight on to the results we can see that all applicants the highest oh, let's just go to the uk no that's the lowest home students really really high ucat that's 800 and something 860 something that's ridiculous mean is around 675 not it is really high um you guys can do that just follow the tips in the ebook um home students home students they really they have it really exceptionally high because they're international um okay so the ucat interviews home students that guy 100 percent he got in lowest is 617.5 which is very low but but the mean is 705 so there you go it it's primarily based on the UCAT, trust me on this one, it's primarily based on the UCAT. Now with your offers, typically it's the performance on the day and I'm not discrediting that if you perform bad, you'll get a place. That's not what I'm saying with a good UCAT score. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is people who tend to revise better for the UK CAT are ones who tend to revise better for the interview course. This is not a causation, it's a correlation, but still it's 705 to get in. That's really, really high. As in like the mean one who got an offer for graduate medicine or the overseas channels, it's really, really high. Um, 312 enrolled, 239 declined. Maybe those who are going to UCL, going to Imperial, going to Oxford. 172 did not meet the offer. This just shows that it's really, really important that you smash your A-levels. There's no two ways about it. Your A-levels cannot be taken again unless you're in like a quarantine season. It means you're taking it in November or October. Now guys, this is the end of the video, unfortunately, but hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully it was of benefit and um, basically thumbs up, 50 likes, hopefully. Let's go for it. And um, tell me how you're finding this new setup, this new video type and yeah, so guys, catch you in the next video.